Denver Wine Radio with Paul Bonacquisti and Cha Cha Chavez. Presented by Bonacquisti Wine Company and Cha's Back in the Day Cafe. Get on up. I like a sex machine. Yeah. Oh, goodness gracious. Eddie Murphy. Yeah, really. Water's hot in a hot cup. Hey. I like a sex machine. Oh, goodness gracious. I'm still working on it. Cha's Back in the Day Cafe. We're gathering the peeps and we're putting the band back together. Just a little bit more time, Polly. A little bit more time. A little bit. Yeah, I'm. A little bit I more. I just keep time. waiting. I know. I'm not going to bug uh, you. I, I know. I know. But every time I hear an old school jam, I think of Cha Cha and Cha's back in the day cafe. I know. Yeah. I'm. I'm really anxious to get it going. I met with some folks yesterday, and we're tying all the. How do they say? Uh, cross the T's, dot the I's, and. Whatever business people say, I'm just I'm just getting some good music together. You gotta hit the switch. I gotta hit the switch and make the ass drop. That's right. All right, like make a Friday happen. night on Federal. <laughs> hey, you're listening to Denver Wine Radio. Special guest in studio, Kyle Schlachter from the Colorado Wine Industry Development Board, and uh, super wine guy. Uh, he was uh, featured in Wine Enthusiast Magazine, Forty Under Forty. And uh, our uh, Vinny Nonek hotline is open at 303-831-1340. Love to hear from you. Give us a call, 303-831-1340. Fire us a question. And uh, we're tasting Chardonnay today. What's better than uh, Chardonnay Saturday in the Mile High City? Nothing. Nothing. That's right. So um, so we went through. Uh, now we're on the. We're back to Colorado. This we, is. Uh, I'm ahead. sorry. Go ahead. No, I was going to say uh, they've been taking me on a tour. All yes. morning. All, so we, we've yeah. gone to... We started in Colorado. Colorado. Then we went to France, to France. Burgundy. Mm-hmm. Uh, then we went to California, the Russian River Valley. Mm-hmm. And now we're back to Colorado. Okay. Okay. So uh, we, we've got the Plum Creek Chardonnay. This is uh, 2014. And um, this is Colorado grown. And um, uh, what's cool about Plum Creek, they've been around since the mid-80s. They were one of the first wineries kind of in yeah, the... Yeah, one of the first. To, to really, you know, to kick this thing back into gear in colorado so yeah they're they're uh sue phillips has done a great job with that winery it's uh one of the iconic winers in colorado yeah and they've got um and so they had a i remember at one point they had a chardonnay vineyard uh that they had planted back in the day and it uh it was 20 you know 20 something years old yeah they had vineyards uh in the west elks over by paonia and vineyards in palisade yeah, I believe they sold the vineyard in Paonia uh, recently, and this wine is actually a blend of grapes from both those vineyards, from over in uh, Delta County and then from Mesa County. It's nice. very, uh, very pungent. This one is kind of strong, in the sense of it, real fruit. I mean, I can hit. I mean, I can. Yeah. Really. So taste this the one, fruit. yeah, this one punches me right away. More, exactly. but a lot of tropical fruit. A lot. So. Yeah. In a good way. Mm-hmm. So a lot of pineapple. Mm-hmm. Oh, lots of pineapple. That sounds. Oh, yeah, that tastes really good. It's it just hits you, you know. It's just like mm. double up. Mm, mm. Some good bright fruit, nice acidity. It makes your um, your mouth water when you. Yeah, when you taste absolutely, it absolutely. Yeah. It, maybe some. I don't know. I was gonna say watermelon, but I don't think it's watermelon. Some kind of like. Hey, it's kind of so, cantaloupe, maybe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Very yeah. fruity. What's cool about it is. Um, that that big smell I, I got up front uh, and that you got, um, but then when it hit my palate, still nice, light, fruity, exactly. And like you said, Kyle, a lot of you know, real good bright mm-hmm. acidity and uh, man, real nice clean finish. Mm-hmm. No, you can tell it's it's got some good a little uh, notes from the oak there, but it's not not overly oaky. It's it's really well balanced. This is a nice wine. Yeah, yeah. very nice. Very nice wine. Yeah, in 2014. So very nice. You know, here we are uh, in 2018. So I'm not sure about the bottling uh, dates on this, but uh, let's just let's just say it was bottled a year after harvest, uh, approximately. Probably and, something like that. Yeah, something like that. So it's been uh, two and a half, been two and a half years in the bottle. Maybe you know, coming up on three years. Very good. So uh, still holding really nicely, and um, oh yeah, that, that this wine will drink for several years more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's. So that's why I get that question a lot at the winery. Uh, people ask me, "Oh, you know, how long are wine supposed to last?" And mm-hmm. and um, so, uh, but you know, in general terms, I just tell I, I always say wines are meant to drink in the first five years. Okay. So uh, you know how long the uh, average wine lasts from the liquor store to someone's house? About twenty minutes. Drive home, open it up for dinner, and that's it. That's it. That's it. Yeah, most wines are bought at the liquor store and opened up that night. So if you're cooking with one and you don't use it all, can you? You know, put it in the fridge and yeah, keep it put for it in a the couple fridge, of days. Put a cork in it. Mm-hmm. 
There's yeah. little uh, things they sell. You can put argon and right, pump right, right. air out of it. But, but just a couple of days, you can't leave it in there for yeah, just a couple of days. Months or at a time. Most wines like depends that. on the wine. There are certain wines like uh, Madeira, uh, Port could probably you know last mm -hmm. a little bit longer there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those la yeah they Jerry. they last a long time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, so wines, um, yeah, two to three days okay. is general. You, I always say throw it in the fridge. You can probably stretch it out a week. Okay. Okay? But, right you know, why do you want to wait? And why do you want to let yeah, wine exactly. stay What, what is this leftover wine you speak <laughs> <Yeah>. of? <laughs> hey, so we're going to go to the Vinny Nonek hotline and uh, talk to Ray Ray. What's, What's up? up? What's up, Paul? And, uh, you guys, how's it going? Cha-cha. Going really good, Ray Ray. How you doing today? Great. In Chicago doing a show tonight, wrestling show. Match going on tonight, big one in Chicago. We'll, go, we'll have to hook it up sometime with you guys. If you guys get a winery uh, thing going in Denver, I'll show up over there for you guys and check out you guys and uh, enjoy the crowd and the people, man. Heck, yeah. We, what we, we got to do is then bring the wine and bring the people. And everywhere in uh, Mexico is listening to you live right now. And the people in my California are listening to you guys live. Right on. Well, we appreciate that. Hey, what's your wrestling name? Is it Ray Ray? Ray Ray Mysterio, 619, San Diego. <laughs> right on, dude. Well, good Wine luck with your man. Kind of has the ring to it. It, there. Does, it, have does. A, it yeah. does have a ring to it. And I enjoy you guys' show on the wine and stuff. I enjoy wine. It's good. If you chill it just right, and, you know, just like Don Perry on back in the day, that was in a good, exciting movie where this guy bought Don Perry on to have this girl in this flick, and it was a cool, interesting. That's how I got interesting in wine. Wow, that's awesome. Ray Ray? Yeah, so enjoy your show. And, God bless you. Ray Ray John Mike. Shout out to Denver Broncos. God bless. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> you got to love him. got to love him. Good oh, luck tonight, Ray Ray, man. We're, we're going to be rooting for you. Wow. Sounds like he's having his own Chardonnay smackdown. <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> so I want a, I want a mask. I got to think about that. Bring a ring. We'll put it in the parking lot outside right? the winery. Luchador. Uh, there you go, luchadores. Yeah. We, we'll, can, we can sell masks? We'll, we'll do something. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. All anyway, right. It made me cough there. So, well, um, okay. So, this was awesome. Here in Colorado, how much would this bottle of wine cost me? Uh, this was uh, uh, 16 bucks. Wow. 1598. So, nice. And the cool thing about all these uh, wines, if, if um, we would have blind tasted them, so meaning we wouldn't have known where they come from. Um, I, I wouldn't have guessed uh, I, Colorado yeah. for any of them. I could, yeah. I, oh, that's obviously Colorado. I mean, they're all different. They're all different, but they're yeah. all very good. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. So, um, so yeah, that's uh, what's coming up with uh, Colorado. Uh, so yeah, th we've had a lot of good years here. Uh, the last couple of years, we get some good harvests. Um, people are making some really great wine. And uh, one of the things that the Colorado Wine Board does is put on the Colorado Governor's Cup. It's a competition. We invite all the wineries in the state to submit their wine. We bring in judges from around the country. Oh, nice! Come and taste the wines. They taste them all blind. They don't know what they're tasting, and they say this is a gold medal, this is a silver medal, bronze medal. And we go through that. It's a two-day uh, event, and we whittle down the winners to the top 12 wines in the state, and we do a great tasting that people can buy tickets to and come taste the Right wines. on. Have you participated in this point? I have participated, right yes. I, I enter some wines every year, and um, it's usually, uh, I think the call for wines comes up pretty soon, like here at the beginning of the summer, late spring, and... And, uh, Usually this year we're pushing it back a little bit. The judges, oh, right. the judges in September, so we'll oh, have wow. uh, wines coming in August. Because when you go into the winery, you've got all these like, they're not medals, but these plaques of best this, best this, best this. You no, know? I got, yeah, I got a bunch of medals. Up yeah, I got there, a lot so, of award-winning wine. Yeah, so um, yeah, so I enter my wines uh, like a lot of the wineries do, and then the judges, mm -hmm. um, yeah, they they award bronze, silver, and gold, and then they, like Kyle said, they take the twelve best wines out of the competition and uh, award called those the Governor's Cup case. So they got extra special. Uh, wow. Extra special yeah. those. Yeah, yes. send those to some writers around the world, uh, let them taste it and write about them. So right good way on. to get some recognition for Colorado. Absolutely. we got some really good wines here. And then I believe this year on November 8th is the public tasting where people can come and taste those wines. we got some great oh, wow. chefs to pair foods with. And nice. so it's a great night. Yeah, it's, it's full huh. on full on meal there with uh, wow, 12 you, great wines. You guys, you really moved it out. <laughs> Yeah, it's down in, uh, yeah, so it's going to be November 8th? Uh, that's the tasting. That's the public, tasting, the public, the public tasting. tasting, but then September will be the judging. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, that's cool. So, Very yeah, nice. Yeah. you got to keep you guys on your toes. Here. You are. You're keeping me mm. on my toes. Now, see, I've got this great wine that I just released uh, today, uh, the Sangiovese, that I'm calling Rosso de Colorado. Now, the idea is to, I have to make sure I have enough around that I could enter in the cup. <laughs> You got enough to enter, and then you got enough enough to keep, and then keep or after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so that 
I gotta now. I'm, I've got to think a step ahead of these guys all right. the time. So you got to go back and start smashing some grapes. I do. <laughs> got to do something. Lucy style. <laughs> all right. Kyle brought in a uh, really cool uh, wine from uh, Italy, 2007, and it's uh, well, it fits in. It's Chardonnay, so. Yeah, but the little gadget that he has. And, yeah, he's using a funky. It's, it's not a like a cork. cork. It's not a corkscrew. Oh, I mean, Paul yeah. cheated half of his wines had a screw cap on. Okay, well, you're going to explain that <laughs> after this, the break. This thing is called an osso. Okay, an osso. An okay. osso. Not an asshole, an osso. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's a uh, different, different way to. <laughs> Depends who says it, okay? Depends who says it in what part of the country. Okay, go ahead. It's uh, mostly used for older corks. Because okay. if you have, have you ever uh, tried to open a wine bottle and the cork just crumbles? That's the worst. That's the worst. So okay. You, Save that thought, all right? Because when we come back, we're gonna, you're going to finish the story and tell all us right. about the okay. also or the oso. Okay? <laughs> all right. This is Timberwine Radio on Mile Uh-oh. High Sports. Uh-oh.